In our second example problem, using Coulomb's law and conservation of charge to problem solve the problem, we have a little more complicated situation in that the information we're given initially isn't enough to directly solve the problem. And let's see how we're going to handle that. Well, we're told that there's an attractive force of two newtons between two charges, Q1 and Q2. We're told that Q1 is negative, Q2 is positive. We're told that they're separated by three meters. And we are told that Q1 is greater than Q2, so that we know the net charge is negative. So we're given a lot of information here, so the first thing you want to do is always carefully read the question, get all of the given information down, and get a visualization for what's going on. As we did in our last example, these solutions are always going to be based on a before and an after they touch. Conservation of charge before, conservation of charge after, and let's see how that's handled. Well, we are told all of the before information, so we know the magnitude of the force. Again, when we use Coulomb's law, we don't let the positive or negative come into play calculating the value. So we know that magnitude Q1 times Q2 from our force, Coulomb's law force equation gives us 2 times 10 to the minus 11. So let's just box that and let that sit. Well, we have to be given some information after they touch, and we are. We're told that the distance between them remains the same, so they remain... 0.3 meters apart, but we're told the force now changes. We go from 2 to 1.6. So let's get the after information down here, and I'll get back to my exploded statement here, because to me this is kind of the trick to making sure you get your solution correct. But so, f so far, in terms of the before and after, let's focus on what's not tricky. Well, we're given the equation for Coulomb's law, F equals K, Q1, Q2 on R squared. Now, for us, as we said now, until we get to understanding capacitance better and the capacity of one, char one sphere to hold a different charge than the other, they will always have the same final Qs, and that's where dropping the subscript really becomes important. So get that in here, because that, that is really really important you don't want to it doesn't you don't want to have it appear like you have more unknowns than you do so the after case tells us that the q so we're going to go from coulomb's law here to our after case situation where we'll solve this for q squared then square root it and now we have to think a little bit because we know that the two Qs, when added together, represent our net charge. So after they touch, just like in our last example, Q plus Q equals Q net, and here we're also going to put the negative out in front because we know Q net is negative from our initial problem. So, yep, this is a little bit tricky. Ultimately, as you can see here, we are going to use Q net to go back and relate it to Q1 and Q2. So we take our Q net, and relate it back to Q1 and Q2 with the appropriate signs. And at this point, you want to be confident that you have done a correct physics analysis, that you have your two equations, equation one and equation two, two equations and two unknowns. The problem is solved. Everything that's in blue below here, the quadratic equation, is just taking equation one and equation two and doing the algebra to be able to solve for the final answer. So, of course, we want to be able to do that. What I did here to uh, show you what is going on, I solved for Q2 in equation 2. So, if you take equation 2 here, solve it for Q2, and plug it in up here in equation 1 for Q2, that's my bracketed term that I have here, and now I have a quadratic equation with Q1, uh, a squared minus uh, uh, 
x squared, ax squared minus uh, bx uh, plus c equals 0. So you're just using your, your quadratic equation to get your two roots. And here, we have to be a little careful again at the end because 1 times 10 to the minus 5 is bigger than 2 times 10 to the minus 6. And I know that q1 is greater than two, q2. So even though my roots, uh, when I took the, the quadratic equation, uh, gave me inverted numbers, I have to flip them back because q1 is negative and bigger than q2. And this, of course, are the correct answers. So this one is a little tricky. And I put it in here explicitly as a complete example so that hopefully you will not be surprised by any conservation of charge problems come quiz and test time.